Hello and welcome to the first real episode of Fire Walk With Us. I'm Paul. Dave. And Justin. And this week we're talking about the pilot episode of Twin Peaks. Bleh. Quick rundown of the plot. We open up basically meeting the city. Or Added village. in not quite. Well, oh, you want to talk about the title sequence? Exactly. You got to start with the bird and the sawmill and the voice. Yeah, it shows off the city. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for the most part. We, yeah. we then see the Twin Peaks uh, town sign, which says there's a population of fifty-one thousand two hundred and one people, I and I call that. bullshit. I highly doubt that. that. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need to adjust that. At Maybe some point. down to a few hundred, but. Um, I've always assumed Twin Peaks had a population of about 2,000. Mm. Um, okay, maybe. That's always... Well, mind you, there are things later in the series that are going to contradict that. Yeah. Because they're going to have a department store. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. But as it sort of is, they'll probably need to adjust that sign at some particular point. They won't. Anyway. Uh, we see Pete coming out of his house. Well, no, technically we see Josie first getting ready, and then we see Pete coming out of his house, because he's gone fishing, yeah. and he finds something. And just a note, shows the one, like, Asian girl for, like... Yeah, that's Josie. For, yeah, shows her for quite a while, for some reason, like, doing her makeup, or... I don't know what she's actually doing, but it focuses on The her vague thing I while. remember at the start of it was just her deeply sighing. Yeah. And focusing on certain things. But it makes me things. think she may know something or not. I don't know. That's, like, my theory. Yeah. Okay, so Pete comes out and he sees something on the beach. He goes Who the flip lettered on my beach? Plastic. Okay. He goes over to investigate and he goes back into... Well, he finds out that it's a body. He goes back into the house to make a phone call to Sheriff Truman. Uh, eventually, Sheriff Truman's going to come out. They're going to find out that it is the body of Laura Palmer. Hmm. Who is wrapped in plastic. Yeah. And I'm going to do that line a lot during this series. Duly noted. In that accent, too? Yeah, but that's how he says it. Didn't you notice the weird way he says wrapped in plastic? Yeah. No, I was too distracted by another particular character during that sequence by the name of Lucy, the receptionist at the <laughs> sheriff's office, who's seriously on helium. I mean, goodness woman, how can you talk that high? She so could just say, use the black phone over there? No, she over-explains everything. Yes. Uh, <laughs> she, in a, in a way, David is kind of like Lucy. The, actually, you, you do explain things a lot more than needs to be. You are the male, male Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, kind of true, Dave. But that's okay. I'll live with it for the moment until something happens to discredit it. Okay. Uh, so basically, they're going to introduce a bunch of characters in this episode... We're going to find out... Um, oh, yeah. Uh, so when uh, Pete calls the sheriff, he says um, that she's dead. And then uh, Truman says where, where. But he doesn't ask who is dead. Who or... That is true. that he would already know. That is true. He may or may not already know. Who knows? Like, Well, but, it also may be kind of a concern of... Yeah, the fact that the person is wrapped up in plastic so the audience doesn't know, maybe that would supposedly conceal that sort of thing, but no, as it sort of sits, that's definitely a decent enough question. No, but Pete just says, uh, like, she washed up on the beach, and Cooper just says where. He doesn't ask who. He could also simply ask where is the body, meaning, like, not just asking the word where. Yeah. Also, with the case of who, it would most likely just result with, they're covered in plastic, we don't exactly know. Yeah, I just... the reveal for some time later on. Yeah, I just, I think there's a, there's a very specific reason that they're not having him ask who is that. Mm. I think there there's a point where they're trying to set up people as suspects. Mm. Right. Now, if you actually are going to believe that the sheriff did it, or that Pete did it, kind of unlikely... But they're trying to create a sense of, I don't know who to trust. At least not yet. They definitely succeeded in that in the end. It's going to be like Clue. Somehow everyone could have done it. Well, sadly not you're not far though. off oh, in a way. Shit. <laughs> oh, they no. will, they will, re well, we'll get into that later. No, let's not get um, too far into that. 
so Laura's mom wakes up. Laura isn't uh, coming down to get ready for school. She goes up. Laura isn't in her room. She calls uh, her boyfriend's parents. Uh, he isn't there. They assume that uh, either Laura went to the football practice with him or that maybe she went off with her father, neither of which ends up being true. And we find out that Bobby hasn't been to football practice today and he had been late or not shown up for at least a couple of weeks. Nah. Uh, we find out that Bobby, instead of going to football practice, has been having an affair with uh, a waitress at the diner named Shelly, who is married to a truck driver named Leo. Hmm. Uh, we also meet Ben Horn and Leland Palmer. We also meet Ben's daughter, Audrey. Yeah. There's a lot of people to meet in that period of time, I guess. Yes. Uh, they also have uh, the Norwegians at the Great Northern Inn. They're trying to get them to sign on to invest in a country club that Ben wants to build. Mm. Uh, and Audrey is going to ruin that for him later in the episode. Mm. Oh, yeah, by um, having her pencil stuck in that uh, styrofoam coffee cup. And then pulling, and then pulling it. it out. And p it pours all over the papers. Yes. That's great. Uh, so She's a troll. Bobby, <laughs> Bobby gives Shelly a ride back to her place. They find out that uh, Leo has already arrived back at home. Uh, Norma is sus of their affair when they leave. Bobby ends up going to school eventually and gets told by the sheriff that Laura is dead. Yeah. Uh, he also informed um, he also informs Leland of this and somehow walks right by Leland before informing him because. He walks into the hotel, Leland's sitting right by the door. He walks to the front desk and's like, yeah. where's Leland? And just like, right over there, you dumb shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, not in the exact words, just kind of points. <laughs> I that's what she was thinking. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh not to mention that, you know, one scene where it decides to go close up on that ceiling fan that that yes. one scene. It's like, this is, this is a thing. It's a ceiling fan. Yep, there is a ceiling fan uh, when uh, Laura's mother goes to investigate why Laura hasn't come down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Big, uh, high up ceiling fan. Yeah, with the really long string because they didn't have the wireless clickers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, Truman tells Bobby, uh, Principal Walchek tells the school they uh search laura's room they find a video camera and her diary and we find out another girl is missing um oh the scene where leland finds out that his daughter uh has been murdered is absolutely heartbreaking mm -hmm. and is a fantastic performance by ray wallace yeah mm -hmm. uh josie decides to pull the plug on the mill uh oh uh, yeah right which uh, apparently is supposed to make her a suspect for some reason. I don't quite get that, but that was, I guess, the intent there. I'm assuming I'm not, so. Like, why I'm else we... I'm not really sure what the case was with that. It's like, why yes, the mill was going to be shutting down for a particular reason, but I was kind of like, why? Okay, so she's shutting it down because that's the same... Because each episode is going to take place over the course of a day. Yeah. So that's the same day that uh, they found the body of Laura Palmer. Yes. And they found that... out that Ronette was missing. Mm -hmm. So um, because it's a small town, she was like, we're going to shut down business, go spend time with your family. Yes, yes. It, there's, a, there's a logic to it. Yes, there is logic to it. But it's also kind of a case of... Why? Yes. That is what you're meant to think. Uh, we also find out that Big Ed is having an affair with... Uh, Nadine and Ed's wife has a fascination with drapes and drape runners. Mostly so my talk. kind of case, I just sort of okay. simply stepped. She kind of crazy. Yes, and she has one eye. The drapes are gonna put themselves up. <laughs> <laughs> and we get introduced to one of my favorite characters on the show, Special Agent Dale Cooper. He yeah. is a great character, and uh, he is talking to Diane on his little recorder. Telling yeah. her about the cherry pie in the trees. Yes. Just pretty fantastic. Uh, Cooper and uh, Truman meet up. They meet Dr. Jacoby. Uh, Cooper goes to examine the body and he finds something under the fingernail, which we find R. to be a letter R. Under her uh, ring fingernail. Yes. yes, and we also find out that something similar happened to another girl a year prior named Teresa Banks. Hmm. Uh... Dale Cooper breaks open Laura's diary because fuck the key. 
Nah. You don't need a key for that shit. They also find in the diary uh, cocaine residue and a safety deposit key uh, for the yeah. box. Mm-hmm. Uh, they go to the train car where Ronette and Laura were taken. Uh, Andy has a fantastic uh, moment there where he's crying and he's talking to um, Lucy and he says, uh, tell Sheriff German I didn't cry. Mm. Which I thought was just fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Cooper and Truman interview Bobby. Truman uh, passes a little note on like the... I don't even know what you call it. Look like a calculator, but it's not really a calculator. Yeah, no, it's one of those things you used to be able to take notes in. I can't think of what it's called. Like a PDA kind of thing. Sort Says of that thing, Bobby didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. Like, and um, basically another thing that was also noted in the video was... Um, James's bike is like shown like in the reflection of her eye in the Okay, video. we're gonna have a chat about that, because that's utter bullshit. Well You could not get that kind of resolution if it was shot on VHS. Bullshit. bullshit. Just imagine like a video camera going right up to the face. A big bulky. It's all shown cam, it's also know. shot in 480p. You weren't gonna like, get that good of a reflection. Then. Bullshit. And yeah. if even then, it should just show the reflection of the video camera. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> ignore the facts, Justin. Yeah. Uh, the Norwegians end up leaving because they learn about Laura's death. Well, mostly because of one particular person. Cause yes, she's Audrey. Yes. <laughs> uh, we find out that James has half of a necklace, the other half belonged to Laura. Uh, we find a note in the train car that says, Fire, walk with me, along with the locket, which is on top of a mound of dirt. The title locket. drop. Well, that's the title That's the title of the movie, but that's not going to happen for a few years. Okay. <laughs> um, they open up Laura's safety deposit box, which has a bunch of money, uh, like 10 or 20 grand in it, and, and a magazine that, called Flesh World. Yeah, that magazine. Uh, we With go to the sticking like page or whatever. Yeah, the page is dog-eared to the ad for Runette. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we go to a town meeting where we meet the log lady among a few other people. Yes. Namely the mayor, who is pretty fucking fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we get a nice shot of a traffic light. Do we? Yeah, there was a traffic light. You didn't note the deer head on the table at all. <laughs> no, I did not bring up the deer head on the table. Yeah, it fell like down. the. Is there a reason? It's just... You'll find out. Okay. I'm not gonna... I can't... There are certain questions you're gonna ask where my answer is going to have to be, you'll find out. I'll find out about the deer head? Yes. Okay. Just, just uh, okay. Donna sneaks out. Uh, Mike and Bobby pull up. I love... Oh, okay. I love Mike's line. Don't worry. Bobby's the one doing the driving and he's clearly <laughs> fucking wasted. Yeah. yeah kind um, of um, anyway, I call these two cool. characters doofuses. Doofus A, doofus B. Which one's A and which one's B? Um, A would probably be uh, Bobby. I'd have to agree. So, um, he, he's the one that's car surfing. I just have a note that says car surfing doofus. <laughs> Uh, James says out. on the day she died, uh, Laura was on the back of his bike. She ran away, and she was a different person. Uh, Laura and James kiss. Um, oh, yeah, and then they go to hide the necklace, and it's like they didn't actually dig the hole. That must have been pre-dug because <laughs> they just, like, put it down and shovel dirt on top of it, and that's really And then shit. stuck a rock on top of it. Yeah, like, that won't get noticed. Uh, James gets arrested. Uh, we go, and we find a... Uh, assortment of donuts yeah. oh, yes. in the meeting room. A policeman's dream. <laughs> uh, Truman gets a room at the Great Northern. Uh, Mike and Bobby bark at James for some reason. <laughs> farf, 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 farf. <laughs> uh, we find out that Joyce and Truman are a couple, although nobody seems to know about that. We also find out that Catherine and Ben are having an affair. Uh, and then uh, Truman at one point says it must have happened 24 hours ago, which tells us that it's been one day. Mm. We get another shot of a traffic light. Yep. We mm, get it's kind uh, of in the wind. We get a point of view search with the flashlight for the locket, and we end with Sarah Palmer screaming for some reason. Mm. What do you guys think happened? And tell me what you thought of the show as a whole. Well, on the whole. It hasn't gotten it, it. 
isn't starting off as weird as I'm supposedly thinking it's going to get, but we'll have to kind of see. Um, on the whole, it's for the most part, I think I'm kind of following the motions with most everything. It's like, oh, they're assuming this person. Oh, wait, they're assuming that person. Oh, no, wait, they're assuming that person now. Oh, no, wait, now it's completely unanimous who it could be. I'm not sure anymore. But now it's all the particular stuff of the stuff. Here's an easy way to try and do it. Just pick one, just, uh, just pick one person and say that's the guy that did it. Now, Basically. I suppose that's how one of my three picks for the supposed person who murdered the person is. So, should we go over what, like, theoretically, who done and did it, who could potentially have done it? Okay. Well, before we go on to that, sadly, I did not see my couch. But we'll have to wait to see that, so. Okay, well, no, you're not going to see your... Why? I don't even know what that means right now. <laughs> don't One worry. of the only things David remembered was something to do with a couch. Okay. And that hasn't happened yet. The coach didn't do it, I swear. <laughs> Are I you don't sure? Think, this I is a David Lynch project. It I, could have been the coach. I don't think so. On the one hand, he might have gone off in that crazy kind of direction. But as it's sort of kind of sitting, I think he's kind of trying to make some crazy sort of thing happen. But, again, it's kind of a vague thought as it is right now. Or, I mean, she could have gotten herself caught in the shower curtains and flushed down the toilet. That's how she ended up there. Right, okay, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Where did the plan... Oh, no, I get it now. It makes yeah. no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> yeah. And it's an absurd theory, and it... Well, I mean, it is a David Lynch project, so that's... <laughs> yeah. No, I highly doubt that's the case. <laughs> I would uh. hope that. Anyway, so I asked both of you while you were watching the episodes to come up with who you think gone done it and why. Okay. So who wants to start with their theory? Alright, so as it sort of sits with me, I got three theories. So kind of the weakest theory and more so around the lines of, I really hope this person did it because they really need to pay for what they did, is Audrey. It's God Audrey? damn it. It's God damn it. She's a troll and a... B. It's just, ugh. It's like, why? Why are you doing all these particular things? Do you just want the attention, little rich girl? Does daddy not give you enough with all the other stuff that he gives you? Ugh. So do you have a particular reason why you think Audrey might have done it? No, not really. It's, okay. They haven't really developed Audrey that much for most no. of the particular things, aside from she's a troll, as Justin sort of stated. Okay, who else do you think might have done it? Um... The other particular person that sort of came to mind and that I'm sort of sticking with from how the show sort of represented it, the name is sadly escapes me, but the biker person that was tossed into jail. Oh, James? James. Because sure he has that sort of particular stuff going on about that and everything can sort of be pinned to him. I'm not quite convinced with his innocent act though. With everything that he sort of gave and explained about what was supposedly going on, there is that other thought, but sort of fitting to a particular person, he's probably the best fit for characters that we've actually been given so far. So you're thinking it's James? I'm thinking so, for the moment. Okay, why do you think James did? Because despite the fact that he gave a couple particular points that could supposedly throw him off, Lots of them weren't exactly covered still, since A, he was one of the last people that was still with her before she died, and despite sort of explaining all the specific details of she was supposedly crazy and caught up in something crazy, think she, that can think all easily be a lie. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. And then, of course, the final and third thing is Glove Man. <laughs> so we don't know who Glove Man is. Exactly, but again, with the end of the episode and whatnot, I believed it was also Picture Person, but that might also be Leo. And I'm not quite sure if that was the case. Picture Person? There was a mild shot oh, of yeah. when yeah, they yeah. saw the truck in the driveway. There was the same picture of that with a person standing in front of the truck. Yeah, that's Leo. Okay, it is yeah. Leo. Yeah, yeah. And that is still the same person that... She lives and or is married with? No, Shelly's married to him. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 
So, but yeah, those are kind of my three theories as it sits at the moment. Okay, so you're mostly suspecting James, but you're also maybe Leo. Not so much Leo. It's kind of the case of there's an additional person who oh, wears, a pair, yeah. wears a pair of gloves, and it's like, oh, need to keep an eye out for those gloves. Also the couch. Yes, the couch clearly did it. Justin, who do you think on Done It and Why? Um, my theory was basically, I came up with it when I watched like the first... 10 minutes twice for some reason, and I'm like, okay, I know Laura Palmer's dead or something like that, and then it's like, I want to say the Asian girl did it, because it showed her on the screen for, I don't know, a considerable amount of time, and I always think, like, maybe she knows something, maybe, I don't know, and then, um, she goes and shuts down the, uh, windmill for some reason, who knows why. Okay, so you think Josie did it. Uh, any particular reason that you're suspecting her over, let's say, James or Bobby or Leo? Doofus A and Doofus B and uh, James? Okay, well, Doofuses obviously did not do it. They're just Doofuses. <laughs> Fair enough. Despite how they if, supposedly act, they're idiots. So yeah, there's they're, not they're much complete, that's going to come They're up. completely moronic. They're not going to be the ones who've gone and completely done it if they've done it. Yeah. So I can't imagine them kind of scheming that sort of thing. Um, James, I can't see him actually doing it. He had an honest relationship with Laura, I assume. And for the most part, I would say he's being truthful in his, uh, the words that he's speaking about with uh, um, Donna. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, basically he's the current scapegoat, not the actual, um, criminal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you think Leo could have done it? Because they do definitely spend time making you think that Leo obviously has a temper. Yep. Yeah, Uh, Leo's kind of And he was out of town when it happened, so he could have killed her. It's... Hard to say. He, I haven't really seen the character too much to actually get to know more about him. Other it's than, just that one particular scene that kind of showed you the worst yeah, aspects you use, of him. You use these types of cigarettes only, not some other brand or whatever. Yeah. Just to make sure that, you know, his girl isn't going out seeing another guy or something. But he doesn't really have any motive to like kill anybody that I can see aside from the mental stuff that he's most likely going yeah, through but that's mental, only if but... someone pushes him so far I'm sure yeah okay. I don't know yet okay no no that's fair yeah so overall what did you think of the episode let's start with Dave yeah, it was alright for most things that were sort of going on there were kind of moments of what as well as uh and of course the ugh <laughs> okay. The uh, eh, and ugh. Okay. What did you think, Justin? Um, it was really, really long, and I watched it twice. <laughs> well, nobody forced you to watch it twice. Well, no, I want a, a better grasp on, like, a few different scenes, so I watched it again to kind of get down exactly, like, what was going on, potentially, behind the scenes, if I could see it that far yeah okay i'm um, watching any other additional episodes mm, yes so i my next question would be and this is going to be for both of you again is if you watch this on television keeping in mind that from now on most of the episodes will be one hour well less than an hour yeah mm. uh would you be interested in watching more episodes or would this be like oh my god i can't sit through another episode let me take it to back to like 1990 when this came out or so. Fair enough. Probably. I'm not sure what else was on at the time other than like The Simpsons. Yeah, you would have also been like six months old, so. That too, yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, you'd have been Barely. just born. Yeah, I would have been just born. I don't know, something <laughs> like that. Yeah, ditto. Yeah. If it was the case of nowadays of any sort of particular thing. Yeah, it's definitely better than some other particular things that are on TV nowadays. A few. Never trust me. Yeah. 
Alrighty, so do you have anything left to add, David? Still keeping my eyes peeled for that bloody couch. <laughs> You're on couch watch for some reason, and it's looking great. Alright, Justin? I'll see you in my dreams. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> Bobby's amazing. I still don't understand why they bark at James. I don't know either. <laughs> They just randomly just start barking, like, arf, 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 arf. You also, you kind of have to wonder if they got some minor brain damage from the bar fright that they got caught up in. Oh, yeah. That's possible. <laughs> They've all got they concussions. They kind of started it by, you know, they started it the moment they entered. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, well, they're assholes. Yes, yeah. they are. Alrighty. Oh, okay. I actually have one other thing I want to talk about. Oh. So, you were introduced to a character who is going to become important. You are introduced to the Log Lady. Yes. What do you each think of the Log Lady? And what do you think her purpose is in the series? She carries the log. <laughs> well, yes, that's very good, Justin. That's kind of in the fucking name, though. <laughs> With the vague moment that I remember seeing the Log Lady, the immediate thing that comes to my mind is she's either a grounding point to specifically kind of connect the show to a certain point, or kind of acts as kind of the, not so much voice of reason, but kind of a sort of specific figure that's going to state something that's going to sound ridiculous, but means incredible importance. Okay. Uh, so, she is definitely going to give clues to Cooper. Now, her clues are going to sound insane. And there are going to be other people who are going to have that role, too. Uh, mm. At the beginning of season two, we're going to meet the giant. And he's going to give him three clues. All of which will come true, and they all sound absurd. Mm. Like, there's a man in a smiling bag. So, she's basically like a fortune teller of sorts. She's Yeah, she's like a clairvoyant, kind of. Okay. Meh. Nah. Yeah. All right. She gets messages from her log. Hey, she has to carry around the logs and gives her messages. It's all good. All right. So, who was your favorite character so far, Dave, or Justin? Whoever wants to go first. I'll go, David. Well, definitely not on my favorites list is Audrey because, god damn it, Audrey. <laughs> Audrey's fantastic. She's <sighs> just a troll. Uh, yes! I dislike great. her tremendously. Um, I feel some... Nah. I feel, I guess, a little bit for Andy. I mostly kind of question, why are you a deputy if you can't handle this shit, dude? Well, it's also... But it's just, I think, maybe within his character, possibly. But as it sits, he seems like a decent enough guy. Lucy is definitely interesting after getting past the Helia voice. <laughs> and... Cooper, despite seeming weird when you first see him, is definitely interesting with all the points that he sort of hits and sort of being like, oh, damn. He's good at his job. Yes. Cooper is awesome the, every time he's on the screen. <laughs> yes, Cooper is arguably one of the best characters in television. Yes, he's uh, pretty... He's pretty awesome. Ah, the name. I really think, Justin, you're going to love Cooper okay. through the entire run because he does some wacky ass shit sometimes. Awesome. I can't remember the name of the gentleman, but it's the guy who's at the gas station whose wife is the one that obsessed with drapes. Oh, Big Ed. Big Ed. Okay. He seemed fairly decent. And then he cheated on a woman, and I'm kind of like, eh, yeah, well, he's so, kind of at a point of not being able to trust you, but you'll somewhat be tentative on my favorites list. In all fairness to Big Ed, everybody is sleeping with everybody in this town. Mm. <laughs> I made a note of every affair, and that probably took up half a page. Duly done. <laughs> so, that, yeah. Alrighty, so, you made a point about Andy not understanding why he's a deputy. And I think the easiest way for me to explain that is this is Twin Peaks, not Chicago or New York. It's a small town. Yeah. They're not used to dealing with murders. They're not used to dealing with... The, dep the sheriff and the deputy in this town, they break up bar fights. They give out traffic tickets. Hmm. They, they investigate the occasional stolen bike. Yeah. They don't deal with murder. 
this is a small ass. This is like going like being a cop in like a small ass town. Well, yeah, yeah, it's also why they got in like the FBI director or not director, but like the guy. Yeah, Dale Cooper. Agent. Well, that's because Ronette walked across the state line, so the FBI became involved uh, because it became an interstate crime. Uh-huh. Although, if it's just if it was just a murder in Twin Peaks, the FBI wouldn't be involved because mm-hmm. there has to be some interstate oh, federal issue. I see. Yeah, that's why they did that was so that they could bring in Dale Cooper. Blah. So Dale Cooper is amazing. Bleh. Mm-hmm. Yes, he is. Um, any last minute thoughts or anything from either of you about Twin Peaks or what you expect to happen next? Is the bird in the opening sequence going to be important? No, he is just a bird. The bird, <laughs> okay. the bird didn't do it, David. No, Wait, the bird the is bird. not a clue. Wait, no, so it's just showing nature in so, the opening. So, are you saying that the bird isn't the word? No. Boo! <laughs> No. The bird is most definitely not the word. <laughs> uh, so do you have any last minute thoughts or what you think is going to happen next? I did my silly joke for things. In the crazy world of Twin Peaks? Um, next time. Somehow they'll find some other guy who may have done it. But then, I don't know. I mean, granted, I'm sure there are other plot lines other than just the one for Laura Palmer. Yes. So it's not just going to be focused on just the mystery around her. No, we're definitely going to get into more uh, other stuff very quickly. Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of assuming as much. Now, Mm -hmm. Cooper is going to be primarily focused... Him and Truman are going to be primarily focused on the murder. The other characters are going to have other stuff going on. Hmm. Yep, and... They'll probably intervene with the their investigation and stuff, probably. Yay! Plot crossing! Yes. Um, oh, okay. So, we found out about some cocaine in Laura Palmer's diary. Or at least suspect. I don't know if they actually officially confirm that it's cocaine in this episode. I think it was more so the case that, suppose a girl is dead, there's always the concern of drugs on everyone's mind in cases like this. And then they found a whole bunch of money within the safety deposit box that most likely relates to some. Well, they also found a white powder in her diary. And I think they suspect that... Cooper suspects it's cocaine, but I don't know if he actually gets officially confirmed Mm. that it is cocaine. So, do you think that's going to be important going forward, or is that just a distraction? Probably just distraction. I want to say it may not be a distraction. It could be... It may not be cocaine. Who knows? It could just be baking soda. Yeah, baking soda. She was making cupcakes. Alrighty. I don't know. So or it be- could be ash. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So before we go, I'm going to give you... Let's just say a little hint to where the series is going to go. All I'm going to tell you until next week is... The owls are not what they seem. Who? I'm Paul. Who? The owls are not what they seem. Who? I'm going to punch you square in the face, you little shit. <laughs> I feel like this joke has been done too many times, but oh well. Anyways, it yeah. It works so well, though. Anyways, <sighs> I'm Justin. And Dave. And once again, the owls are not what they seem. Who? I hate you. <laughs>